Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Transformation Tuesday. Listen, I'm so excited that you are in the space uh, this morning. Uh, listen, it's just a great day to be alive. This is the first Transformation Tuesday of the year. And so we give God all the glory and all the honor for allowing us another, e another year. So I've prayed this morning that this year is already finding you well, healthy, wealthy, and wise. So uh, for those of you all, this is your first time joining. We start Transformation Tuesday off by talking about the definition of transformation. The definition of transformation. So it is the willingness and courage to grow develop and renew every area of my life that does not reflect the will, the wisdom, or one more time, the willingness and courage to grow, develop, and renew every area of my life that does not reflect the will, the wisdom, or the ways of God. I'm willing to change anything that does not benefit my purpose. So we come to Transformation Tuesday with information, with inspiration, and with revelation um, so that we can um, adapt, so that we can um, assimilate so that we can shift, we can maneuver things in our life uh, for the better, right? And so we've been talking about the Bible and mental health. Like, what does the Bible say about mental health? So today we are on part four. Today we're on part four. And um, I'm excited because um, in this series of teaching, um, I know it is it's not a a, a huge emphasis. It's not uh, even popular to talk about mental health, right? It, it, it's, it's taboo. Um, but it's so important, right? It's, it's, it's important that, that you and I understand that God is concerned about our mind, right? And so, um, we, we've talked previously in um, uh, previous conversations about God's care towards us in every area of our life, even um, even our minds. Right. And we talked about how we were tripartite beings. Right. We are a spirit. We possess a soul and we live in a body. Right. And, and the moment we're born again. Our spirits become new, right? And and our bodies, right? We th these are housing units for our spirit and our soul. Our bodies are not the real us; it's just a part that we can see. And then and then we talked about the soul, right? Which is the intermediary component, right? Our mind, our will, our imagination, our emotions, and our intellect. That's the soul. And that's where our mental health is affected. It's where our mental health is stored, right? So we and 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 we uh, concretize the the idea that I could be born again and still struggle mentally. Yeah, I can be a lover of God and still have issues with my mind. I can I can be on the praise team preaching the word of God. And still be overwhelmed and stressed, right? Because those components of my soul, my mind, my will, my imagination, my emotions, and my intellect don't necessarily have a, 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 a direct effect, right, on my, my spirit, man. They, they work in unison. They work in harmony. But uh, my, my soul is the compartment it is the facet the faculty 
of my being that gives my spirit illumination. It gives uh, my body the ability to move, right? And and so people can can really be um, in justification and not have and not have sanctification together, right? They can be uh, in Christ, right? But the but the the mind to 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 live well, the mind to succeed, the mind to overcome, the mind right to uh, uh, over overcome instability and issues and problems. They can they can be born again and still not have resiliency. Right. Not have good coping skills. It's it's possible. And so we talked on last week and I want to do a, re- a quick recap on areas of the mind that are affected when our mental health isn't good. This is just quick re- recap. You have to go back and watch all of the other three to get all of the all of the details. But we, we talked about the areas that are affected when our mental health isn't good. Our self-worth, self-worth, how we view ourselves. Right. Our self-confidence, how we express ourselves, our sensitivity, how we respond to others. Am I oversensitive? Am I insensitive? My stability, my ability to keep a sense of peace. Right. My ability to strategize how I plan my life. Just because I'm born again doesn't mean that I that I have the wherewithal. Right. I have the forward thinking. I have the intuitiveness to be able to know what I should do with my life. Doesn't mean that my my discernment is developed. Doesn't mean that I have the spiritual equipment to improve my life just because I'm born again, right? Um, it affects my sanity, my ability to make decisions, my surrender, my ability to trust others and not just others, my ability to trust God, right? And then lastly, my success. This is how I view my future. Do I view it from the lens of bleakness? Do I spend my days in hopelessness and inferiority? Right. That's my complex. It's hard for me to believe um, that there is a life for me worth living. We you can believe the Bible and believe all of the promises of God. You can believe all of the things that God has said, but it doesn't mean that you believe that he's talking to you. Right. You don't think that you qualify for the goodness of God. These are things that we will never say out loud. But I've I've been doing this long enough to have had these intimate conversations with people. Strong prayer warrior, strong intercessor. Pray the house down. When they finish, the people of God are encouraged, they're on fire, they're inspired. And then that person goes back to their own personal life, lives, right? And lives a life of self-defeat, uncertainty, insecurity. Had an individual like that one time and I told them, I said, I think I think you believe everything about God. You 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 pray. This person was a strong intercessor. I said, I just don't think you believe that God is talking to you. And she admitted that it was true. Right. These are these are possibilities. These are possibilities. And so we were going to pick up today. We're going to pick up today on talking about some help. Now, I've, I've written a manual and on my way to writing a book. And so one of the, some of the information that I'm going to share with you today is out of the manuals, out of the book. All right. These are things that um, the spirit of God has given me over the years to help the people of God in this area. And so for those of you all. Who know, you know that I pastor and also I'm a licensed mental health professional. And so I've been doing both of those for over a decade now. And so this is just a conglomerate of information that the spirit of God has downloaded um, to be able to help. Because when I, there's two uh, spheres of operation that I'm moving. One, it's the secular arena. And when I'm in that arena, you know, it's the it's the a lot of uh, secular information, uh, knowledge that's. Uh, been borrowed from God, whether people know it or not. And and so people on that in, in that sphere, they want to know the spiritual element. They want to understand more of the spiritual realm of how things work, because they know there is a scientific 
part, but they know that science can't explain everything, right? And then there is the 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 other domain is the is the church realm or the spirit realm, and and people on that side want to know more about practical application. What are some uh, strategies and interventions that may not necessarily be outlined in the scripture, but are helpful? So my attempt is to bring both of those worlds together. So that's our conversation in the manual and in the book and in, and, and as far as our conversation is concerned today. So uh, I, I want to, uh, I, th I think, start with three of the most common mental health struggles. There's, there's many out there. So um, those of us who are in the social services related field, if we are professionals, right, there's some type of nomenclature, some type of book that we use. And uh, generally in this country, we use a manual called the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. And so the most updated one would be the DSM-5. And so when you hear uh, diagnosis like schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, they're, they're borrowing those terms from our nomenclature from that book. Right. So we've already mentioned day one that our help, our, our prescription for wholeness as human beings is the Bible. Right. Everything else is supplemental. And so man ha, uh, has attempted to to reach into the soulish realm and give definition to our problems. And that's where the diagnosis comes from. Doesn't mean that these things are wrong, uh, but they are they are they are man's, you know, wisdom, man's idea of what's going on with us. But only and, and they they're helpful. Right. But only God can make us whole. So we we must understand these things from the lens of Scripture. So when I use terms that come from like the DSM five, I recognize these terms They're They're accurate. They're correct. But they're from the lens of Scripture. They're from the lens of Scripture. So my responsibility is to find my help in God. To find my help in the word of God. And so. Those of you all, maybe you know some people who struggle with uh, poor mental health. I, I would share this broadcast um, because I think that I'll be able to share some things that are that are helpful. Right. And so I want to talk. I want to just talk about three. There, there's a bunch out there, but I want to talk about three. I want to talk about three in particular. So uh, number one, number one um, out of the three most common ones that I see. Um, well, 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 let's just talk about these three. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about these three. I'll outline them. So these will be the three that we probably see the most. So depression, anxiety, and suicide, which are all serious. Depression, anxiety, and suicide. So remember I said these terms, depression, anxiety, and suicide, you're not going to find them in the Bible. Right? You're not going to find that word in the Bible, but they're not new issues. They are not new struggles. Solomon says something that was so important. He said, there's nothing new under the sun, right? Maybe people experienced things in different ways 2000 years ago. There's nothing new, right? And so we just give them new terms as, um, you know, as time goes by, as we gain new information, we become more intelligent as people. Right, we become more insightful. But these three, they're not new, but they they and, I, and we talked about this in, in uh, episode two. But we see great people of God, Jeremiah, David, you know, Moses. You, you, you see these three issues are are super prevalent in great men and women of God in the Bible. These three areas these three struggles are not new we see them over 2000 years ago and we see people in spite of these three things be greatly used of god i say that as a message of comfort for someone listening to me and you struggle with your mental health 
and are uncertain or unsure or unclear if you if God will ever use you. I'll, I'll tell you, you become a prime candidate for God when you have recognizable struggles that you are willing to give over to God. The grace of God becomes available. So you are not disqualified if you can if you identify yourself in these struggles. Right. It, it is actually uh, a, a caveat to the power of God being shown in your life. Right. And so and so let's talk about these three. N number one is, is depression. Now, the, now the word depression in the Bible is identified as the spirit of heaviness. Right. Or being downcast, broken hearted, troubled. Same issues, just different words in the Bible. All right. So depression. Excuse me. Anxiety. Anxiety. Fear and worry. Anxiety, fear and worry. Anxiety, fear and worry. Right. And so the Bible tells us to be anxious for nothing. But by everything, prayer and supplication should be the prescription. Right. Fear and worry. Anxiety is nothing but fear. Of a future that you cannot control. Anxiety. And then there is suicide. No will to live. And so I, I, I showed you all, I think at least 10 people in the Bible. Who were depressed. Or suicidal or struggled with anxiety all right i'm not going to recap those but i wanted to normalize these struggles of the soul and remember we talked about these struggles don't necessarily have to be anything that we did they we could be the victims of a horrible past a traumatized past we could just be we could just be the victim right that haven't necessarily mean that we've done anything these things are passed down um these is, these issues can be passed down generate general generationally the scriptures declare those as iniquitous patterns it can happen that way right iniquitous patterns we pass down in our bloodline that's why the blood of jesus is so important all right, let's talk about um, let's talk about depression really quickly. Let's talk about some signs of depression, signs of depression. So uh, fatigue, sleep disturbance, struggles with your mind, cognitive dysfunction, struggles with concentration, feelings of worthlessness, hopelessness, like extreme irritability, restlessness. Um, you used to be interested in a bunch of things um, or certain things. Now you've lost that interest. We call that anhedonia. It's a it's a loss of pleasure. Um, there's hobbies and activities that you would normally participate in. You no longer have the desire just out of nowhere. Uh, appetite changes, um, persistent aches or pains that the doctor can't explain Uh you know, weight loss, weight gain. Um, there are people who struggle um, with with their weight loss, and it's not necessarily because um, it's it's genetic or the diet. It's it's because they're in a place of depression, and so the body uh, can't respond in the in the appropriate way to help them um, uh, function at an optimal level. Um, to keep their immune system healthy. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of the other system I want to say. I can't remember it right now. Not the immune system. Their digestive system is affected. Your digestive system can be affected by depression, right? And so when you're depressed, your body is secreting all of these harmful hormones that you may not be aware of, um, like cortisol, 
cortisol is released into the bloodstream when we're we're scared or we're depressed or we're down and it's an unhealthy chemical right people who are uh, excessively anxious are always releasing adrenaline which is supposed to be used for fight flight or freeze supposed to be used for when we're participating in athletic endeavors but it's not supposed to be used when we're standing around working at our desk trying to get sleep at night we use those the body uses those chemicals uh, at inconvenient inappropriate times it's so those things can become um they can become catalysts to all types of health changes and one of them can be not being able to lose weight right so um it's it's important it's important it's important so depression these is 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 one that we're well aware of, but I just wanted to give you all a few signs and symptoms. Those aren't all the signs and symptoms, but some major ones. And listen, just because you may some of these characteristics that I outlined may be a part of your life doesn't mean that you're necessarily depressed. But if you're seeing um quite a few of these in your life, and you've been having them for like the last two weeks consistently then that may be something that you want to check into. All right. It may be something that you want to check into. All right. Um, what about anxiety? Anxiety. What are some signs of anxiety? So, um, butterflies, churning feelings in your stomach, feeling lightheaded or dizzy, some people describe like pins and needles on their fingertips and their toes. Um, feeling restless or unable to sit still. Headaches, back aches, other aches and pains that are that you can't describe. They can't. They don't have a medical basis. Um, heart palpitations, fast breathing, sweating and hot flashes just out of nowhere. Right. These can be signs and 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 anxiety. Anxiety in general is normal. Right. We all get nervous for an exam, nervous for an interview. Right. That's those. That's that's normal. Right. Get ready to. um you know, get married and, you know, so we say somebody might have cold feet. It's normal. Things that are unfamiliar, things that we may not necessarily be prepared for, things that are exciting. Some anxiety is normal. But when it becomes an issue is when these things happen over and over and over again daily because I fear a future that I cannot control. What's going to happen tomorrow? Who's looking at me? Right. Am I going to lose my job? Am I ever going to get married? Right. When the thoughts. Become hurtful emotionally. Then we probably are in a situation that needs to be looked at. Right. Am I living most of my life fearful? about a life that seems to be out of my control. So those thoughts are so hurtful to me that they keep me from being able to focus, keep me from being able to function, to plan, to strategize, right? I know when it's become an issue. I know when it's become an issue. And, and so anxiety is super problematic for a lot of people. Listen, I want to tell you, uh, abnormal anxiety is spiritual, just like depression is spiritual. What do you mean, Pastor, when you say that? And I'm going to get more into this um, when I get into part five and part six. So all of all of these uh, mental health struggles that I outlined, all of them are spiritual in nature. All of them are spiritual in nature. And so let me just let me just give a quick point of reference and I, and I, I promise I'll get into the explanation of it. One or two things have, are happening. So it all spirits 
when I say spiritual, I'm talking about spirits, right? So you believe in heaven, you better believe there's a hell. You believe in angels, you better believe in demons. So Paul outlines those in Ephesians 6. I'll talk about those. But just quick point of reference. All of, of these mental health struggles are outlined or, or have their, their roots in the spirit realm. Why? Because you are a spirit being. Right? You are a spirit. You possess a soul and you live in the body. You're spiritual in nature. So all mental health struggles are aided by a spirit. Just like your life in God, it's aided by the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is not aiding you, you're not a born again believer. It can't come into the body of Christ except through the Holy Spirit. That's why the unpardonable sin is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Simply means that you don't acknowledge the Holy Spirit's work in your salvation. Every human being is aided by some spirit. If you're in the body of Christ, hopefully you're aided by the spirit of God. All right. So there's, there's two types of aids in the spirit when it comes to the demonic realm. So one is what we call possession. And that's for unbelievers. I personally don't believe that believers can be possessed. But an unbeliever is a candidate for demonic possession. And that simply means that that spirit technically inhabits your being, right? And so can create chaos and consequences like depression, anxiety, and suicide. All right? So that's one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is believers. So we are not possessed but we can be oppressed we can be oppressed all spirits need a condition to thrive somebody say that with me all spirits need a condition to thrive so the bible says god inhabits the praises of his people Sets up and dwells right where you are. When you create an atmosphere of worship and praise, the spirit of God finds expression because the atmosphere is conducive. Right? The same thing works in the demonic realm. If there is a condition in your life that is conducive to the demonic realm, you better believe it is. We have given them permission to set up camp doesn't mean that they're in us. It means that they can be around us because demonic entities can be present in conditions. That's why I don't do drugs and alcohol. And I know pe some people who, you, you, you know, advocate for alcohol uh, as a believer. I'm not here to, you know, um, talk theology. It's whatever you believe. But I know scripturally. That if my mind is in a place where my faculties are not under the control of the Holy Spirit, then there is a spiritual entity called pharmakia. That's where we get our drug term pharmacy that then has the legal right to be in that space. He has the legal right. If I'm intoxicated with illegal drugs or alcohol, I've given him the right to function in my life. It's, it's not hard. It's not deep. It's not any of that. All spirits reside in conditions. That's why sin is not just about you not doing the wrong thing. It's about the conditions that are created. And so, so believers can have conditions that have become conducive to spiritual entities that take advantage of those advantage of those conditions and then create things like depression anxiety right suicidal behavior y'all with me and so we have scriptural help for it 
I'll give you one in particular for anxiety, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but what has he given us? Power of love and a sound mind. That's not just a cute scripture. That is a prescription. Like you would go to the doctor and they would write you a prescription. Say, I didn't give you the fear, but what did I give you? Power, love, and a sound mind. Well, pastor, what is power, love, and a sound mind? That's a prescription. That's why we studied the word of God. Because we have prescriptions for these things, right? So I'll, I'll talk about that later, but I just wanted to use that nuance. All right. All right. All right. We're at our time. The time went by super fast. Listen, I'm going to jump into signs of suicide. Next time, I'm going to jump into signs of suicide next time, but I have to end here. I said I'm gonna, only going to rele relegate myself to 30 minutes of time. Um, so um, next time, we're going to jump into signs of suicide, and uh, hopefully I'll finish up with depression, anxiety, and suicide, and then we can get into some remedies and some strategies. Listen, thank you all so much for joining and jumping in. I will see you all next Tuesday, next Tuesday on Transformation Tuesday. Y'all be blessed.